Hi, I'm Lou, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing wiring for ROS2. Have you ever wanted to take a random sensor on the internet and use it with your robot, only to find that there was no ROS driver for it? Well, wiring is the name of the API used by Arduino style libraries to implement sensors on the Arduino. Wiring for ROS2 is an implementation of that wiring API for boards with exposed headers, like a Jetson or a Raspberry Pi. Now, if you're interested in running ROS with microcontrollers, I definitely recommend looking at micro ROS2, as this isn't a replacement for it. But for compatible devices, it's a quick way to onboard. So let's get started. So in this video, I'm going to be using the BME280 combo board. Uh, this is available independently as well. The BME breakout uses quick style connectors, allowing you to plug it in to a exposed header and use these devices directly. This particular device is uh, on back order, but still available as of May 2022. Now, if you look at the description, it's got some fair, it's got some information about it. There's the CCS 811, which is a quality of uh, air quality sensor, and then it's got the BME 280, which has humidity, temperature, and barometric pressure. So, say I want to have my robot navigate my home and find drafts the temperature and humidity might actually be really useful. So we're going to expose that to ROS. Let's see, we click on documents and we find that there's no ROS node here, but there are Arduino style libraries. If you click on the library here, it will actually download a zip file, but I actually want to use the GitHub link directly. So we're going to select GitHub and scroll down. Now you'll find that this is actually an aggregation of multiple different libraries. So let's go ahead and find the library directly for the BME280. This has an implementation of the I2C API and exposes it with a simple interface. And that interface is actually has uh, exposed through examples. So this is an Arduino library, INO, uh, Arduino INO, which is really just C++ under the covers. It's fairly easy to use. First, you initialize your I2C bus, then the sensor and then you can read data. So how do we use this in a ROS node? So I've provided a template as well as an implementation of the Arduino API that you can use to bootstrap your own ROS nodes. To use this template, select the Use Template button on the ROS wiring GitHub. In this case, I'm going to say ROS quick and BME280. Go ahead and make it public, and I'm creating the repository for, from a template. What this is going to do is actually going to fork my repository into yours and rename it at the same time. Now, this is actually your code on your GitHub that you can customize for whatever scenario you are interested in. And so now I'm going to take the code, the clone, I'm going to use the SSH because that's how I have my repository set up and copy that and then SSH over to the Jetson. I'm now going to switch over to my terminal window and SSH into my JetBot. I'm going to CD into the workspace that has my Jetson dev container that has the workspace for the ROS components inside of it. So CD into my workspace, JetBot, and if you look here, you'll see that we have a workspace. I've set this up using the SSH solution earlier in these videos, so if you're confused by what you see here, go ahead and watch some earlier videos in this series. CD workspace, CD search, and now I'm going to see all of the different ROS nodes I have checked out. In the previous um, section, I copied the SSH link to actually clone that repository. So now I need to do git clone recursively because I use submodules. And then I'm going to select the BME280 ROS node. Okay, so now that it's checked out, I can go ahead and customize it. So now I've opened my Visual Studio instance and connected it to the JetBot. There are a few customizations I need to make. For example, I'm going to rename and copy this, Control-C, 
and update the package.xml, the CMake files. And I'm also going to rename the launch file and what's inside of the launch file. There we go. And at that point, we have customized the template for our use case. So I'm going to go ahead and build and make sure that I've made all the necessary adjustments. So now that it's built, I'm actually going to switch back to the SparkFun GitHub and select their link for the repository. And I'm going to submodule it into my ROS node. So go ahead and grab the clone. Since I'm not pushing back there, I can use HTTPS. I copy that, and I'm going to switch back to my SSH instance and do a git submodule add. Git submodule. Uh, put it in the source directory. So git submodule add. And I paste the SparkFun BME Arduino library. Great. So let's switch back over to VS Code. Now we can actually see it in the source directory. There are a few things that we actually want to include. So first, in order for our code to find this, we need to specify the header location. And then we also need to include the C++ file. So I'm going to copy the relative path, go into CMake lists and find the header, include, and paste it. Now, since this is relative to where the CMake file is and not the workspace, I can remove quite a, bunch, quite a bit of it. Now, I also don't want to include the header. I just want to include the directory. Now, we'll also copy the C++ file and add it to our sources. So in this case, we do need to include the C++ file as we are in, uh, linking it into our main. Okay, so now we can control shift B, build, uh, and make sure it builds without error. So now we're going to customize our main. Let's take a look at what this looks like. Open main C++. We basically have an initialize, a timer, for pulling the sensor and a couple of parameters. For this particular ROS node, I need to know the ID of the sensor. I need to know the pull frequency. And I also would like to include a frame ID, which is the name of the, the frame in the composition of where the sensor is located. It's not necessarily needed now, but when we do, uh, if we want to visualize it or if we want to include it in a robot, it's helpful to have. Okay, so first, let's go ahead and declare our parameter. Frame ID. And then we'll add it to the initialization. So get parameter or std string frame ID. I'm going to turn off the screencast. Okay. By default, uh, we're going to call it frame ID and now we actually have to declare it. Now the BME 280 is on I squared C address 77 by default, so we're going to use that. And now we're going to start using the SparkFun API. So let's go up to the top.
and declare the class. Now this actually matches the example almost to a T. So if you want to copy and paste from that, you can do that. So BME 280, my sensor. And once we initialize the I squared C bus, let's go ahead and initialize the sensor. And if it fails, RCL, CPP, error. Now, at this point, we should have an initialized sensor that we can create a timer on. Um, but we also want to tell Ross about it. So how do we do that? Let's look it up. So now let's switch over back to our web browser. And I'm going to look up what sensor message can I use for this? So Ross2 sensor messages. Yeah, let's just look up ROS2 sensor messages. Is there a sensor message we can use? Of course, I know there is one. It's the temperature message, but this is how you would find it. Now, the temperature message includes both the temperature and degrees Celsius, but also a variance. And we're not going to set the variance. We're just going to set temperature. So let's switch back to our UI, our VS code, and add the temperature message. In order to use the temperature message, we have to update our package.xml and declare it. And reference it in CMake lists. Now there is a block in here for find package. And include it into our target dependency to let the compiler know that this project depends on that thing that we just found. Okay, now with that, we can include the sensor message header. Sensor message MS, uh, MSG, and then it's temper HP. So this includes the header file for the temperature message that we'll create later. So now let's declare the publisher. Now a publisher is RCL CPP. We tell it the type that we're going to be publishing. and that it's a shared pointer. And now we declare the, or create the publisher. Now, typically you will allow the uh, topic to be customized, but for now I'm going to create a it in code and declare that the Q length is specified here as well. This should also be customizable through a parameter. So now that we've declared the publisher, we've created the publisher, we actually need to read the sensor data and publish it. So in our timer callback, every time we hit that timer, we're going to read the sensor. We need to create a sensor message to use, sensor and then initialize it. First, we need the header, which includes the frame ID. We're going to use the variable we declared earlier that's read from a parameter. And then we're going to give it a timestamp, which says this is when this message was generated. If the hardware is capable of receiving and sending time, you should use that.
And then finally, we're going to read the temperature. Probably should get it from the sensor. And then publish it. Now, with only a few lines of code, we were able to create a net new ROS node, create a publisher that published on the temperature topic, and read from a sensor and publish that data. So let's compile it up and make sure it works. Control Shift B, build. So I missed something in the build, so let's take a look at it. Error. We did not, the temperature.hpp is not found. Okay, so where did we mess up? So let's go back to the ground zero. First, did I declare it correctly? So sensor messages is declared. Oh, that's because I spelled sensor messages wrong. So now that it builds, we're going to run it. I'm going to select the run and debug and create a new configuration for the ROS launch. And it creates it at the top. So here we're going to call it BME280. And I'm going to provide the absolute path to the launch file. I know absolute paths are not good here. We're going to fix this in the ROS node. So select the launch file and copy path and paste it here. Now the other thing you're going to need to do when running in the container is to actually launch the ROS2 daemon directly. So control shift P and I'm going to create a ROS terminal and run ROS2 daemon start. Okay, and now I can press, make sure I'm selected the right ROS node, and press play. Okay, so the ROS node is running. Is it actually reading anything? Let's put a breakpoint in and see if we can find it. Because it's optimized, the sometimes it, it fails to catch. So you have to find where the debugger is actually going to connect it, or catch it, or turn off um, optimizations. So the sensor data looks about correct. So let's we can go ahead and touch the sensor and watch it increase in value. I'm actually holding it, and you can see it's going up. And then I can also pull it off in an air. And we can watch the temperature go down. Can we visualize this? Let's try that. So to visualize this, I'm going to switch over to my terminal window. And I'm going to launch RViz2. Select Add, and it turns out that our Viz has a temperature visualizer. Now, in order for the temperature to be visualized, the sensor needs a mapping from its frame to the map frame, and then we can actually visualize it. So to do that, I'm going to switch back to my terminal, create another window. You can do this in a launch file as well. So ROS2 run. TF2 ROS static transform publisher. And I'm just going to pin the sensor frame directly to map. 
in future videos when we build the URDF, we can actually link it in there. XYZ, roll pitch yaw, map is where we want to pin it, and temp is where it's going to go. So what this is doing is it's saying, broadcasting out to the ROS graph, hey everybody, this, temp, uh, this sensor is pinned to the frame. So now Arviz can see it. So let's go select the temp, and we are getting temperature data. And I'm zooming in with the mouse. And Arviz visualizes it just as a little tiny square, and this will move to wherever the sensor is. Um, so as I touch the sensor, you can see it's getting lighter, which represents that it's getting hotter. And if I use the canned air, it'll get colder. In the future, I plan to add support for GPIO and Serial, as well as SPI. I hope you find this library useful. I hope you find creating new sensors useful. Uh, and in the future, I will demonstrate how to use this library to bring up motors and other sensors. Thank you.